Welcome back. Today we're talking about the second set of nine myths about airline pilots in the aviation industry. If you missed part one, click the link above to check that out. Myth number 10 is that airline bathrooms are intentionally compact. This myth suggests that the size of airplane bathrooms is intentionally designed to be small to discourage passengers from spending excessive time inside. In reality, the dimensions of the airplane bathrooms are primarily influenced by the limited space in the aircraft cabin rather than a deliberate strategy to deter loitering. Aircraft interiors are meticulously designed to ensure space efficiency, accommodate seating, galley areas, lavatories, and other essential components. Every inch of space is carefully considered to maximize passenger capacity while meeting safety regulations and comfort standards. The compact size of aircraft bathrooms is a result of the constraints imposed by the aircraft's overall design and structure. Space is allocated strategically to ensure functionality within a confined environment. Lavatories are designed to fit within the fuselage structure while providing the necessary facilities for passengers. While the limited space may inadvertently discourage prolonged occupancy, the primary goal is to efficiently utilize the available space and maintain the overall functionality of the aircraft. Myth number 11 is that pilots are allowed to sleep during long flights. This myth suggests that pilots are allowed to take naps or sleep during long haul flights without any constraints. In reality, while pilots on particular aircraft may have designated rest periods, the idea that they can sleep simultaneously is inaccurate and oversimplified. Long haul flights, especially those covering multiple time zones, can lead to extended duty periods and augmented crew. Regulatory bodies, such as the Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA, have established guidelines to manage pilot fatigue and ensure the safety of flight operations. Some airlines may implement controlled rest on long-haul flights, or CRO, allowing one pilot to take a planned, short nap while the other pilot remains in control of the aircraft. This controlled rest occurs in a designated area for this purpose, often in a designated crew rest compartment. The napping pilot wears a special seatbelt and communicates with the on-duty pilot both before and after the rest period. The goal of controlled rest is to mitigate fatigue and enhance alertness during long flights, particularly during the non-critical phases of those flights. However, both pilots are not allowed to sleep simultaneously, and strict protocols govern when and how controlled rest can be taken. Myth number 12 is that aviation food is unhealthy due to poor preparation. This myth suggests that the quality of airline food is inherently poor because of inadequate preparation methods. In reality, the challenges associated with airline catering are multifaceted, and factors beyond mere preparation contribute to the perception of airline food. First off are logistical constraints. The nature of air travel imposes constraints on in-flight catering. Meals are typically prepared off-site, packaged, and reheated on the aircraft. This process can affect the texture and flavor of certain foods. Second is cabin pressurization. The lower air pressure in aircraft cabins alters taste perception Exceptions, dulling certain flavors. To compensate, airline chefs often incorporate bolder seasonings which may not align with individual preferences. Third is freezing and reheating. To ensure food safety with transportation and storage, many airline meals are frozen before being reheated on an aircraft. This process can affect the texture and moisture of certain foods. Fourth is limited storage space. The confined space available on aircraft limits the variety and complexity of aircraft menu options. Fresh ingredients may not be as readily available, and certain cooking techniques may be impractical. Fifth is passenger preferences. Airlines aim to cater to a variety of passenger tastes and dietary restrictions, which can impact the overall perception of the food's quality. Individual preferences for salt, sugar, and other seasonings vary widely. While these factors contribute to the challenges of in-flight catering, many airlines invest in improving the quality of their onboard offerings. Some carriers collaborate with renowned chefs, prioritize fresh and locally sourced ingredients when possible, and focus on innovative menu planning to enhance the overall culinary experience for passengers. Understanding the constraints and efforts involved in airline catering helps to dispel the myth that the perceived quality of airline food is solely due to poor preparation. Myth 13 is that pilots can open the flight deck windows during flight. This myth suggests that pilots have the capability to open the flight deck windows during flight. In reality, flight deck windows are designed to remain closed for the duration of a flight, and there are no mechanisms for pilots to open them during operation. Flight deck windows are an important part of the structural integrity of an aircraft, and they are designed to withstand the temperature and pressure associated with high altitude flight. The windows are typically made with several layers of reinforced material to ensure durability and prevent any compromise to the aircraft's aerodynamics. Dynamics. Allowing pilots to open the windows during flight would pose serious safety risks. 
The high altitude environment outside the aircraft involves low atmospheric pressures, low temperatures, and strong winds. Opening a window during flight would expose the crew to these conditions, jeopardizing the safety and the well-being of the flight crew. Moreover, modern commercial aircraft are equipped with sophisticated pressurization systems that maintain a controlled and comfortable environment inside the cabin and the flight deck. Opening a window would disrupt this pressurized environment, potentially leading to rapid decompression, which is a severe and dangerous situation for flight crew and passengers. In summary, the myth that pilots can open the flight deck windows during flight is inaccurate and stems from a misunderstanding of the engineering principles and safety considerations in aviation. The sealed flight deck is a critical component of an aircraft's design, ensuring safety and structural integrity during a flight. Myth number 14 is that flying is a dangerous mode of transportation. This myth perpetuates the idea that flying is a dangerous mode of transportation and is inherently riskier than other forms of transportation. In reality, flying is statistically one of the safest modes of transportation with rigorous safety measures and regulations in place to ensure passenger safety. The 2022 industry fatality risk is 0.11, which means that on average, a person would need to take a flight every day for 25,214 years to experience a 100% fatal accident. This is an improvement over the five-year fatality rate, which was 22,116 years, what contributes to the impeccable safety record of commercial aviation. The first of six factors is stringent regulations. Aviation is subject to strict regulations and oversight by aviation authorities worldwide. These regulations cover everything from aircraft design and maintenance to pilot training and operational procedures. The second factor is advanced technology. Modern aircraft are equipped with advanced technology, including redundant systems and fail-safes, minimizing the likelihood of technical failures. Flight crews undergo extensive training to handle various scenarios, enhancing overall safety. The third factor is global safety initiatives. International organizations and aviation stakeholders continually collaborate to improve safety standards. Information sharing, safety reporting systems, and safety audits continue to a culture of continuous improvement. Fourth factor is pilot training and certification. Pilots undergo rigorous training and must meet stringent certification requirements. Ongoing training ensures pilots are equipped to handle various scenarios, including emergency situations. The fifth factor is investment in safety. Airlines and aircraft manufacturers invest significantly in research and development, as well as maintenance to ensure safety standards. Safety innovations and technological advancements contribute to the overall safety record of the aviation industry. The sixth factor is risk mitigation strategies. Airlines employ risk mitigation strategies to include pre-flight planning, weather monitoring, and continuous communication with air traffic control. These measures aim to identify and mitigate potential risks. While high profile incidents may garner significant attention, they are exceedingly rare compared to the vast number of flights on a day-to-day -day basis. The aviation industry's commitment to safety has resulted in a remarkable safety record, making flying one of the safest and most efficient methods of transportation. Understanding the comprehensive safety measures in place helps dispel the myth that flying is disproportionately dangerous. Myth 15 is that pilots can be struck by lightning and can crash as a result. This myth stems from the fear that aircraft encountering lightning could lead to a catastrophic event. In reality, modern commercial aircraft are designed and built to withstand lightning strikes, and the occurrence of a crash due to lightning is extremely rare. This is due to five factors, the first of which is aircraft design. Aircraft are constructed of materials that conduct and dissipate lightning strikes. The outer shell of an aircraft, typically made of aluminum, allows the electrical charge from a lightning strike to flow along the surface of the aircraft and exit. The second factor is lightning protection systems. Aircraft are equipped with lightning protection systems, including metal strips and conductive materials embedded in the aircraft structure. These systems provide a path for electrical discharge, preventing damage to critical components. The third factor is routine inspections. After a lightning strike, aircraft undergo thorough inspections to ensure the structural integrity of the aircraft and that electronic systems remain uncompromised. Routine maintenance and safety checks are a part of the aviation industry's standard practices. Fourth is lightning avoidance. Pilots receive weather information before and during flights, allowing them to navigate around areas of known thunderstorms and lightning activity. Air traffic control provides guidance to pilots to minimize the risk of encountering severe weather. The fifth factor is extensive testing. Aircraft undergo rigorous testing during the certification process, including simulated lightning strikes. These tests ensure that the aircraft meets safety standards and can withstand the impact of lightning without compromising the safety of the aircraft. While lightning strikes can be visually dramatic, they rarely lead to accidents. The combination of careful design, engineering, 
and safety protocols minimizes the risks associated with a lightning strike. Passengers can be reassured that the aviation industry prioritizes safety measures to ensure the safety of the aircraft and those on board in the event of a lightning strike. Myth 16 is that pilots have a backup parachute. This myth suggests that airline pilots carry a parachute as a backup safety measure. In reality, this is not true, and commercial airline pilots do not carry or wear personal parachutes. Several reasons contribute to the absence of parachutes on board an aircraft. The first is aircraft design. Commercial airplanes are designed with safety features and redundancies to ensure the integrity of the aircraft and the safety of passengers and crew during emergencies. The focus is on providing a controlled and safe landing rather than relying on individual parachutes. The second factor is altitude and speed. In the event of an emergency, such as a loss of cabin pressure, the altitude and speed of commercial aircraft are often beyond the safe deployment range for parachutes. Jumping from a fast moving and high altitude aircraft without equipment could pose greater safety risks. The third factor is training and emergency protocols. Commercial pilots undergo extensive training to handle a variety of emergencies, and their focus is on safely operating the aircraft to execute emergency procedures and landings. The emphasis is on controlled use of safety equipment and adherence to established protocols. The fourth reason is aircraft evacuation systems. Instead of individual parachutes, commercial aircraft are equipped with advanced evacuation systems such as slides and rafts to facilitate the rapid and safe evacuations of passengers and crew during emergencies. While personal parachutes are used in specific aviation activities, such as skydiving and some military activities, they're not practical or effective for use, especially with the unique challenges presented to the commercial aviation industry. The safety of air travel relies on comprehensive training, aircraft design, and emergency procedures rather than individual parachutes for pilots. Myth 17 is that pilots can easily see and avoid every bird in the sky. This myth implies that pilots have full visibility and control over every bird in their flight path, suggesting that bird strikes can be easily prevented. In reality, while pilots are trained to be vigilant for birds, there are limitations to their ability to see and avoid every bird in the sky due to several factors. The first of which is altitude and airspeed. Commercial airplanes are designed to operate at high altitude and airspeed. Birds flying at these altitudes may not be easily visible to pilots especially given the vast airspace they cover. The speed of the aircraft also limits reaction time for pilots to see those birds. The second factor is the size of the birds. Birds come in a variety of sizes, and smaller birds may not be as easily detectable, especially during certain weather conditions or at night. Larger birds, such as geese or vultures, are more visible, but avoiding them can still be challenging during certain situations. The third is flock behavior. Birds often fly in flocks, and their movements can be unpredictable. Even with advanced radar systems, and bird detection technology, it may be difficult to anticipate the precise path of a flock and take evasive action. The fourth factor is airports and surrounding areas. Aircraft are particularly susceptible to bird strikes during takeoff and landing. Birds are attracted to the open spaces around airports. And despite efforts to control bird populations, the proximity of wildlife to runways poses ongoing challenges. The fifth factor is weather conditions. Adverse weather conditions such as fog or heavy rain can reduce visibility for pilots even further, making it more challenging to spot birds in the vicinity of an airport or in the vicinity of their aircraft. While airports and airlines implement measures to minimize the risk of bird strikes, including habitat management and bird deterrent systems, such as bird cannons, complete avoidance is not always possible. Pilots undergo training on bird strike awareness and avoidance, and aviation authorities continually work to improve safety measures to mitigate the number of bird strikes on aircraft. Myth number 18 is that the fasten seatbelt sign is turned on only during turbulence. This myth suggests that the fasten seatbelt sign is used exclusively during turbulence, leading passengers to believe that it is only necessary to remain seated with their seatbelts on when the aircraft encounters rough air. In reality, the activation of the fasten seatbelt sign serves various safety purposes beyond solely turbulence the first of which is takeoff and landing. The fasten seatbelt sign is turned on for takeoff and landing, most critical phases of flight. This is to ensure that passengers are safely seated in case of unexpected events or emergencies during these critical moments. The second is crew movement. The seatbelt sign is often left on or turned on when the flight crew needs to move around the cabin for various operational reasons. This can include during cabin service, flight deck visits, or response to passenger needs. 
It signals to passengers that the crew is active in the cabin and they should remain seated for their safety. The third time is during unexpected events. The sign can be activated if the pilots anticipate encountering turbulence or other adverse weather conditions. However, it is also used in response to unexpected events such as clear air turbulence, which might not be visible on radar. The fourth is for airspace regulations. In certain airspaces, such as when flying through areas of known turbulence or instructed by air traffic control, the fasten seatbelt sign may be turned on as a precautionary measure, even if the flight is currently experiencing smooth conditions. The fifth is as a safety precaution. The sign serves as a general safety precaution, reminding passengers to remain seated in their seats with their seatbelt fastened. This is crucial in case the aircraft experiences any sudden movements or changes in altitude. Understanding that the fastened seatbelt sign is not exclusive to turbulence contributes to the overall safety and well being of everyone on board, irrespective of specific flight conditions. And that wraps up our 18th myth about airline pilots and the aviation industry. Hopefully, these videos have helped dispel myths about airline pilots and the aviation industry. Let me know what you think about this video in the comments below. Hope to see you again soon.